Hello students, welcome. On our previous lessons, we have finished from 2 to topic 2. So today, we want to proceed to topic 3 of form 2. And the name of the topic is called Chemistry of Structure and Bonding. So learners, remember or note that this chapter called Structure and Bonding is one of the periodic table topics. The periodic table topics are three in number. The first one is called the structure of the atom and the periodic table. The second one is called chemical families and button in properties. Then the third chapter is called chemistry of structure and bonding. And that's the one that we're starting today. The reason why these three chapters are referred to as the periodic table topics is that during the case AC, all these three topics or all these three chapters will be set under one question. So let's start with lesson one and we are going to do the introduction side and we are starting with a bond, defining the term a bond. And we are saying a bond, this is the forces of attractions holding an atom, an ion or a molecule together. Students, if you remember the, the second chapter of form 2, that's chemical families and battery properties, when we are dealing with the alkyl metals or the four families. When we are dealing with alkyl metals under the physical properties of alkyl metals, we said alkyl metals have low melting and boiling points. And on top of that, on the trend, we said the melting and the boiling points of alkyl metals decreases down the group. And we said this is due to the decrease in the strength of the force of attraction holding the atoms together as the atomic size or as the atomic radius is increasing down the group. So what we were talking about as the reason, that's where I've started, this is due to the decrease in the strength of the force of attraction holding the atoms together. That's what we referred to as a bond. So if you're told to define the term a bond or what's a bond? We said this is the forces for attraction holding an atom, an ion, or a molecule together. So what about bonding? So bonding, this is the linking and joining together of atoms, ions, or molecules. So we go to structure. What's the structure? And we're saying this is the arrangement of the bonded atoms, ions, or molecules in a regular pattern. So we're saying, in order to understand the nature of the different types of bonds and the structure formed when atoms combine, it is important to remember the following. Number one, we're saying atoms are composed of negatively charged electrons, positively charged protons, and neutrons, which are is electrically neutral. Remember, learners, we have seen this statement in our first chapter, that means the structure of the atom and the periodic table. We said atom is made up of three subatomic particles. The first one was positively charged protons. The next one was neutral neutrons. Then the third one was negatively charged electrons. Number two, we are saying noble gases are chemically stable with electronic configuration of two. That's the duplex state like helium or 4 helium and 28 and 288 that's the octet state for neon and also argon respectively and now us remember this point we have seen it under the noble gases and that's chapter 2 that's why we are saying these three chapters are related so we're saying atoms of other elements tends to attain this electron configuration of the noble gases by one either gaining or losing electrons that's we have seen when we're dealing with ion formations from and two the other way that other elements can get this stable electronic configuration by transferring their valence electrons and number from and three we are saying they can attain this electronic configuration that's two two eight and two eight eight by sharing their valence electrons so we proceed to see types of bonding or types of bonds 
there are three in number that's why we are saying there are three types of bonding namely or this include number one ionic bonding or ionic bond number two is called covalent bond or covalent bonding then we're saying number three it's called the metallic bonding or the metallic bond and we are saying on top of that one each of these types of bonds will be discussed in details we are going to explain them one by one so we are going to start with the first one that's the ionic bond or the ionic bonding and we start by saying ionic bond is also called electrovalent bond and we are saying this electrovalent bond involves a complete transfer of valence electrons from one atom to another of opposite charge and we are saying during the exam you can be asked when does ionic bond exist and we are saying ionic bond or ionic bonding exists mainly when a metal reacts with a non-metal for example if we arrive at a metal like sodium when it reacts with the chlorine the type of bond that exists between them is called ionic bond or electrovalent bond because this type of bond will exist mainly when a metal like sodium combines or reacts with a non-metal like chlorine the type of bond that will exist in between them is called ionic bonding or electrovalent bonding or electrovalent bond so for example if you're having a metal like magnesium then it's reacting with oxygen the type of bond that exists in between them is ionic bond why because magnesium is a metal and oxygen is not metal so the type of bond that exists between them is ionic bonding or ionic bond so during the exam you can be told me the reason name the type of bond that exists in this compound called magnesium oxide so the type of bond there is we are going to say ionic bond because we have magnesium being metal and oxygen being non metal so our reason will be this is because it involves a complete transfer of electron from one atom to another of opposite charge what does that mean that means it involves a complete transfer or full transfer of valence electrons from magnesium to oxygen which is of opposite charge so we are going to go and see examples number one we want to do bonding in formation of sodium chloride so first of all when you're doing the bonding of ionic bond you have to know how to write your compound so the compound here is sodium chloride so how do you write the formula for sodium chloride we have done that in chapter one how to how to write formulas sodium and chlorine were the atoms or the elements in that compound so what is the valence of sodium it is one why one because the atomic number of sodium is 11 so it's having electronic configuration of 281 so that means how will sodium undergo ion formation by losing one electron or gaining seven so that means losing one electron requires less energy so the valence of sodium is one what about chlorine the atomic number of chlorine is 17 so we are going to have 287 so that means it will rather gain one electron then to lose seven electrons so the valence of chlorine is also one then we are supposed to interchange the valence one one so then after that we are supposed to write the formula because there's no common factor to divide then we are going to get na1 cl1 we don't write one that one is hidden so that's how we write sodium chloride if you know that that means proving the bonding will be very simple okay let's just try to see this example because there are several ways of us that we can use to draw the bonding this example one we have done in the long way or the long process here we are having the atom that means sodium atom electronic configuration of sodium atom is 281 then this is the atomic structure of sodium atom this is the nucleus of sodium the first energy level carries two electron the second energy level carries eight then the third energy level carries one Blast. Chlorine. This is the, the atomic structure of chlorine atom. We are having the nucleus, then the first energy level carrying two electrons, the second energy level carrying eight, 
one, two, three, four times two, then the third ridge level is carrying seven. So here we are having chlorine atom and it's carry a uh, seven and electronic configuration of two eight seven. So when we're dealing with ion bonding, that means what will the, the teacher marks is after after this arrow. That means the product side. So we're dealing with ionic bonding. That means we're supposed to draw the, the structure of ion of sodium and the structure of ion of chloride or chlorine. So how will sodium form ion? By losing one electron. That's what we've said. So that means when you lose one electron, you are going to remain with 10 electrons with the electronic configuration of 2, 8. So that means we are going to have the nucleus and the first energy level as usual takes 2 electrons. The second energy level carries 8 electrons. Then we are going to have a bracket and we are going to say positive there. The reason why we are putting positive there is that the number of electrons has, has been reduced by 1. But the number of protons remains 11. So that means 11, which are positive protons. When we add 10, which are negatively uh, electrons, we are going to get a positive 1. So that's the positive sign because 1 is a dead. So that's how we have drawn the ion of sodium. Then we go and proceed get the ion, the structure of ion of chloride or chlorine. How will chlorine undergo ion formation? By gaining one electron. So that one electron will make the electronic configuration of chloride ion to be 288. So as you can see here, this is the nucleus, the first energy level carrying 2, the second energy level carrying 8, the third energy level carrying 8. So initially it was 7, so it has gained one electron from from sodium because remember sodium is a metal and metals react by losing electrons so chlorine is not a metal so it reacts by gaining electrons so that means the electron lost by this sodium is gained by this chlorine atom to form chloride ion so that means we are going to close bracket like that and we are going to check the judge or the sign that we are going to put there so for us to know that, first of all, we have to know the number of electrons that we have here. The number of electrons that we have here is 18. Because initially it was having 17 electrons, it has gained one electron to become 18. But the number of protons remains the same. That is positive 17. Then plus negative 18. This will give us negative 1. So 1 is hidden. We just write negative like that. We are going to write negative. So when you draw something like this, you're going to take the two marks for drawing the bonding in a unique bond or in this compound called sodium chloride. We go proceed to question number two. So in question number two, we are told formation of magnesium fluoride. So we're supposed to use dots and cross to show bonding in magnesium fluoride. So first of all, you have to know how the compound magnesium fluoride is the formula, the formula for magnesium fluoride. So magnesium fluoride consists of magnesium atom with the electronic configuration of 2A2 because magnesium is number 12. That means it's having 12 electrons. So this is the nucleus. It's composed of 12 protons and also 12 neutrons because the nucleus will only write protons and neutrons because protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of the atom, not electrons. So that means the first electron, as usual, takes two electrons, the second energy level takes eight, then the third takes two. This is the structure of magnesium atom. So it reacts or combines with fluorine atom, that's number nine. So with the electronic configuration of two seven, that means we are having nine protons and also ten neutrons in fluorine atom. So when I write the when I drew the first energy level carries two, two dots. We have given cross to magnesium, that means we cannot give another cross to that fluorine. We have to put dots. Then that means the second energy level carries seven electrons, that means seven dots. Then when they combine, from the look of the formula, we are having one magnesium. That means we are supposed to draw one magnesium ion, not atom, ion by checking the product. So that means magnesium atom looks like this, so that means it reacts by losing two electrons or it loses these two electrons to become ion then when it loses that two electrons we are going to have 10 electrons and remember this is how we are going to draw the structure of iron of magnesium the first energy level carries two the second energy level carries eight 
then we are going to close the bracket and remember magnesium has lost two electrons when you lose electron you will be given a positive sign and the reason i've said earlier on is because the number of protons are more than the number of electrons because the number of electrons are reduced by two or they have lost two electrons then we come to the other side of fluorine as we can see here we have f2 that means you are supposed to draw two fluoride ions so from what we have seen here this is one fluoride ion and this is another fluoride ion so how will fluoride how will fluorine a form ion or an ion formation by gaining one electron because it's having two seven now it will gain one electron rather than losing seven so the first energy level carries as usual two the second carries now eight seven of it was for the atom of fluorine then the other cross that one is gained from magnesium this one is from magnesium so we are going to put a negative sign there because it has gained one electron when an atom gains one electron will it will be given negative on it is ion sign this is the structure of ion of fluorine or fluoride ion so it will be given a negative sign so this is again another fluoride ion with the same so it was two seven initially it has get one electron to become two eight so that one to group the first energy level takes two dots the the second takes eight out of this eight it was seven initially it will gain one cross from magnesium atom so that means we are going to have a negative on this again fluoride ion this is ionic bonding because it involves full transfer of electron that means all these two electrons will be transferred from this magnesium to fluorine that means this this cross has been taken there that's one and the other cross remaining is taken here so that means we are doing full transfer of electron from one atom that's magnesium atom to another atom that's fluorine atom of opposite charge because they are of different charge this is positive charge and this is a negative charge okay so lines if you don't want to do it like that what you are supposed to do is that you just draw one one ion of fluorine then you put two here that means you have done two times of that what you have there so we go i can illustrate that in the next example so let's just go to question three so in question three as you can see we have the formation of calcium nitride ca3 n2 so as usual we are supposed to do the atom side and here we are having the atom of nitrogen this is the one for calcium this is the one for nitrogen then what the teacher marks will be after this so what we are supposed to do is we are having calcium atom here we have to draw calcium ion on this other side and remember calcium is having an electronic vibration of 2882 so it will lose two electrons to become stable so that means the ion of calcium will be having electronic vibration of 288 so this is the structure of that ion so we're having two in the first energy level eight in the second energy level another eight in the third energy level so we're going to crawl to close that structure with bracket then we're going to put two two plus that means this two plus is it has lost two electron then we're putting this three is because in the formula we have three calcium yeah so we're going to put the three there okay we go and the side of nitride ion because initially we have a nitrogen atom we go and get nitride ion so nitrogen initially was having electronic operation of two five that means it gains three electrons so when it gains three electron we are going to get an electronic configuration of two eight so if you check how we have drawn that structure of iron of ion of our nitride we are going to have the first energy level to have only two the second energy level is carrying eight but out of this eight initially there are only five dots so it has gained three more dots so we close bracket then we are going to write the three minus because it has gained three electron when you gain you will be given a negative charge the reason why you are given a negative charge is because the number of, of electrons tends to be more then the number of protons so we are going to check again the formula we have two of nitrogen so we're going to put the two here and the, a correct if you do it like that then we go to example number four we are going to proceed and we are told we have formation of aluminium oxide formation of aluminium oxide so when you're writing aluminium oxide the formula look like looks like this al2o3 so we can just have 
an arrow like that, we will not draw the atomic structures for aluminum and oxygen because in drawing them doesn't carry any marks. So we go and start drawing the, the structure of iron of aluminum. Remember, aluminum was having electronic configuration of 283 because it's number 13, so it will lose three electrons to become 28. So the first energy level as usual takes two electrons, so we have two dots. Then the second energy level carries it. So that's we are going to put bracket and we are going to write three plus. This three plus means it has lost three electron. So we are, we have seen two in the formula, so we are going to write the two there. Then we go and see oxygen. Oxygen is number eight with electronic vibration of two six. So it will gain two electron to become stable. So when it gains two electron, we are going to have two eight as the electronic configuration. Then the first energy level as usual takes two electron. The second energy level carries 8, but out of the 8, we have only 6 initially uh, for oxygen. The other 2 is gained from aluminium, so that's why you are having 2 dots there, 1 dot, another dot. So we are supposed to close and write 2 minus there. 2 is the number of electron gain, and when you gain electron, you will be given a negative sign. Then we, we check the formula, aluminium oxide has 3 oxygen, so we are going to write the 3 there. So if you draw it like this, you will get your two marks. You get your two marks like that. We proceed to the next. That's number five. We are having formation of potassium oxide. Then potassium oxide it consists of potassium. That's an oxygen. Potassium is group one. It's having a valence of one. Oxygen has a valence of two. When you interject the valence, you are going to write the formula as K2O. So, what does that mean? That means you are supposed to draw potassium ion two times, or you draw one ion of potassium, then you multiply by two, as you can see there. So, potassium is number 19. When it loses one electron, we are going to remain with 18, with electron population of 288. This is the first energy level carrying two electrons, the second carrying eight, the third carrying eight. So, it has now lost one electron, we are going to write positive there. Then we see two potassium on the formula. That's why we have put in, we have put that to there. Then we come this side. We are dealing with oxygen. Oxygen is number eight, as we have seen earlier on, with electron configuration of two six. So it will gain two electrons to become stable. So that's the first energy level carrying two electron. The second carrying eight. Out of this eight, two is gained from potassium. You can say potassium is losing only one electron. Where are we going to get these two electrons? Remember, we're having two of potassium ions. That means each potassium atom was losing one electron. That means it will become two electrons lost from potassium atom. It will be gained by oxygen atom. So we are going to write two minus there. When you check here, we have nothing. We don't have two, we don't have three. It's only one atom or it's only one oxygen. So one is hidden. We don't write one there. We will only write something here when it is more than one. That means two or three like that. Then we proceed to the next thing. We are saying extended question. You are supposed to attempt these questions to just uh, look if or whether you have understood the concept or not. And the first question we are told using dots and cross and cross diagrams show bonding in the following compounds number one or part a we are having lithium oxide this is how the formula look like calcium chloride this is how the formula look like sodium nitride this is how the formula look like the students remember during the exam the teacher will not give you the formula he or she will only write for you the name of the combo so you are supposed to look how the, the the formula of the combo look like on your own and that concept is taught in chapter one of form two so that's why we were saying these three chapters called the periodic table topics they are very much related so the reason why i've given you the formula is that because some students may not have been taught very well in that chapter one so they will be having a problem in writing the formula once your formula is wrong that means you are all your answers are all the things would be automatically wrong so that means if you have understood this lesson you will automatically be having or be using these formulas to grow the correct uh, bonding thank you for watching